This week, I was granted the opportunity to join a group of educators and community partners on board a schooner, the Inland Seas, to learn about coastal geological sites and new ways of sharing experiences with students. Well, uh, Inland Seas is an education association. It's a nonprofit. So what we do is we uh, we teach people about Great Lakes. In particular, it's science-based ecology, but it also encompasses other things, um, cultural-based, uh, historic, and. Uh, but it also gives people an opportunity to have a very positive experience out on the Great Lakes. So that's in part to help them internalize the value of the Great Lakes as a resource. We teach them about other things that live in the water and uh, how it all interacts. We talk a little bit about the geography of the Great Lakes and um, as well as how important it is as a, as a resource. The program included educational aspects, but many participants, including myself, admitted the highlight of the trip was the chance to sail on the two-masted ship. So Inland Seas was built in 1994, and she was built for Inland Seas. So this wasn't a vessel that was retrofitted or anything like that. It, she was built in Palm Coast, Florida. Um, basically because that was the yard that uh, had the cheapest bid. I don't know if it was the cheapest, but it was, I'll, I'll put it this way, it seemed like the best bang for the buck. Um, but anyway, she was built in Palm Coast, and then as soon as she was completed enough to make a voyage, she came up the East Coast into New York Harbor, and then up the New York Barge Canal into Oswego, New York, and then uh, into Lake Ontario. So that was her first time in the Great Lakes, and it was Lake Ontario. She went over to a festival over in Toronto, and then up through the Welland Canal, Lake Erie, Lake Huron, then into her home port in Lake Michigan. That was 1994. And uh, yeah, so ever since then, she's been operating out of her home port in Suns Bay. This trip for Inland Seas was, was special this year because this is the first time this boat has been on Lake Superior. And uh, so, and actually now that we've been to Lake Superior with this boat, she's been on all five Great Lakes. So that's kind of a special, a little Great. bit of a special, um, a little bit of a special event, mark of achievement. The ship's cook, Jeannie, gave me a quick tour of the galley, or ship's kitchen, as well as the small nearby personal space she's granted for the seven weeks she's on board. The galley includes chest-style refrigerators and freezers, latching cupboards, a gimbaled stove and oven, the aft mast separating the sink from the dish drying rack, and a tiny window into the engine room. We were also treated to two minutes of silence with no electronics. Here's a taste. Part of the day's experiences was learning how to use 360-degree cameras to create virtual reality tours teachers can share with their students. So a couple of years ago, we um, kind of got behind the virtual reality uh, movement. Uh, we saw a lot of potential with that just because of our location, and, and we realized that if we could uh, you know, bring in that component, uh, virtual field trips, uh, that could be a powerful learning tool. So we uh, purchased uh, a virtual reality kit that we used for our, our uh, classrooms to use. Our teachers would take the students on field trips. And after that was implemented for a year, we decided we were ready to go to the next level and we wanted to start creating content. So we purchased a few uh, Ricoh Theta V cameras. Um, we now have a, a collection of about four cameras. This is one of the newer ones that we have that's a, a Ricoh Theta uh, Z1. And basically it's just a really simple camera 
uh, that has two fisheye lenses and when you take a picture with it, it uh, captures an image out of both lenses and then it digitally synthesizes the image together. So you get a 360 degree panorama uh, picture. So we started using these, sending teachers out to different uh, historic sites, uh, geologically significant areas, and just encouraging them to take that picture and use it as a teaching tool to learn about local history, science, math, whatever they're trying to uh, teach their students about. You know, we're not professional photographers by any means, but that's one of the things that we're trying to, um, you know, remind teachers is that this is simple to use technology and that anyone can use it. And uh, we don't have to have a, a training in photography to, to use these. Uh, a few things that we want to keep in mind though is using a tripod because since we're stitching together two images, uh, if we're moving this at all, it's going to be blurry when it's put together. So having a tripod uh, really helps. Um, also having a mobile device uh, helps to too, because it allows us to control the camera remotely mm -hmm. so we can step away from it and take the picture. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can take the picture right from the camera, but then you are standing in the image. And since it's a 360 degree image, you are right there, uh, you know, part of that. So having the mobile device and the tripod are really the, the two essential uh, components. And other than that, uh, it's pretty easy to use and, and pretty uh, simple. Uh, at the depths of the water and you get a GPS. Uh, lots of technology. And Roundme allows us to create a virtual tour of these images. So we'll take the, the image and then uh, we'll take other facts, we'll take other photos, maybe even videos, and we can incorporate those into the still image. So basically we can reproduce that site that we just visited. So the power of this is that we can bring our students to that location even if we physically can't get there. run a, a similar workshop a couple years ago in a, in a similar sort of way. The partners on the project are REMC1. You'll meet Steve um, Cass in a little bit. We also have uh, Erica Vai, who's a geologist um, from Michigan Tech University. We have Lloyd Westcote, who's representing um, Lake Superior Stewardship Initiative, and she's also um, from the great um, the Center for Science and Environmental Outreach at like at um, MTU. And all of us um, have worked together in the past in order to try to um, a lot of different reasons. We're trying to get we're trying to integrate and bring um, place based education into the schools, help teachers, uh, help to model what that might look like and help, but also to um, think about different ways to integrate um, subject matters into those core curriculum, um, but also at the same time as we're integrating things into that core curriculum, trying to excite the kids and get them ex um, in energized to learn. We had a couple teachers that have already built these with their students, and it was such a success even though COVID had happened and we were doing that through that time. Um, we just felt like we wanted to do it again and to see if more teachers would be in interested in um, figuring out ways not only to bring today's experience into their classroom, but also to see if there was other ways that they would be interested in doing virtual um, uh, these virtual tours, but also the, um, the earth science. How can you integrate this in um, to whatever class it is, whether it's physics or kindergarten or preschool, um, just, just giving them that, that opportunity. Yeah, we've really enjoyed coming up here. Um, Michigan Tech has been so far a very good partner. Uh, they've allowed us to use their facility here, which is just fantastic. It's state of the art. It's easy to get in and out of. It has the amenities that make our job easier. Um, it's nice and sheltered. Um, we hope to continue to do this, if not every year, at least every other year. Mm -hmm. um, everybody up here has been really, really great to work with. and. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful area. It's it hasn't really been overbuilt, and uh, I know that's a relative term, but compared to where we come from, I mean, there's a lot of development that's going on, and it's kind of nice to be up on the biggest Great Lake and see that it's a little more a little more pristine than a lot of the other places that we've gone to, and uh, that's something I really that I really enjoy about it. Just a really beautiful area. This is Joshua Vissers.